Back to the classics. Objects mysteriously moving, loud knocks, children seeing things others can't, and paranormal investigators. Today we look at the South Shields poltergeist and discuss everything a family of three experienced in the summer of 2006 and the simple, borderline comical way it all came to an end. I'm Mike. I'm Ian. And I'm Dave. If you've had enough torture and murder the past three weeks, stick around. A creepy poltergeist might be just what the specter ordered. This is Necronomapod. When's the last time we recorded? It feels like it's been a long time. It does feel like it's been a while. I think it's like nine or ten days. And I haven't drank since then, so I'm celebrating, uh, I think, <laughs> ten days of sobriety today. Uh, I poured a drink about four o'clock this afternoon. Is that that's a shoot? You haven't drank since the last time we recorded? <laughs> I have not, no. Oh, wow, look I'm, at this guy. I'm on a diet, man. I'm cutting back. Didn't we go to a concert together in the in, in, in interim? Where was that last week, too? Yes, pal. It was yeah, a that week was ago. last week. Oh, <laughs> God damn it. I'm celebrating seven days sober. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that. But you, yes, it has been nine days since we recorded. <laughs> Which does feel like a long time. When you're used to recording twice a week, that's a long yeah. time. It's a long break. It is a long break. Here we are, though. Yeah, we've been sitting around here talking like uh, we haven't seen each other in a while. <laughs> we haven't, yeah. relatively speaking. I'm drinking uh, vodka and Gatorade tonight. Someone suggested to me uh, Gatorade. It's not bad. It's not my favorite. Do you feel like it's hydrating you as you're getting drunk? No, not really. I feel like it's dangerous because I, like Gatorade's delicious. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, you've had, you know. I prefer gin and uh, vodka tonic. It's not bad, though. Vodka, orange Gatorade. So whoever uh, suggested that to me, appreciate the Orange tip. Zero. Orange Zero. There you go. I'm on a diet. No calories. Only the vodka calories. I got the vodka bubbly going on. Yeah. Healthy-ish. Isn't that what they say? Like, don't drink your calories. Like, you should always drink stuff that's has no calories. Oh, yeah. Well, I ate very little today, so I could <laughs> actually drink my calories in vodka tonight. There you go. Yeah, mine's got zero calories. Zero too. calories in this lime bubbly pack. Oh, yeah. I'm drinking the Gatorade Zero. zero. Yeah. It's all I drink. Orange Gatorade Zero. Orange is probably the best of like their basic flavors. It's Orange is the best. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. Orange everything I love. Yeah, it's good. Um, there, I was going to say something, and now I can't remember what the hell it was. You should take better oh, notes. Oh, we were busy. Ian said we were busy chit-chatting. Well, we put together our awesome September schedule. Yeah. So that's uh, that's a good thing. Some good stories we to discuss. We weren't just you know goofing off on the clock. We were putting in the time, <laughs> doing something. <laughs> um, September will be fun. Talking a lot about Woodstock '99. We did a little bit of that as well. You guys did. I, yeah. I'm familiar with Woodstock '99, but I have not yet watched this documentary. That not yet. Not yet. Like he's going to watch it. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to watch know. it. You never know. <laughs> Stop it. You never know. How many parts is it? Three. That's doable. Each one, like what, an hour, 90 minutes? I think only an hour. Yeah. Not very long. I could do that. It's pretty good. All right. Good information in there that, you know, about uh, the old Woodstock, the original. Mm -hmm. and I feel like I got kind of like the the cliff notes from you guys, though, and I don't think I want to watch a bunch of people jumping in shit. You get to see Flea's Wiener. I, for <laughs> I forgot that Flea did that show uh, naked mm -hmm. and bounced around with his wiener flapping around a little bit. <laughs> If you, like to, if really you like to see Flea's Wiener, me. you should watch them. <laughs> All right. I'll think about it. There were a lot of uh, artists on that that I didn't realize. Like, you always think of Limp Biscuit and mm -hmm. Corn and shit, but, like, Dave Matthews' band played on that, too. Mm -hmm. Jewel. Mm -hmm. Wyclef doing the Hendrix impersonation there with the yeah, He Star was getting Spangled people Banner. real fucking rowdy. <laughs> like, he didn't help that situation at all. He did not. I have to look up that whole set 
of everyone who was there that year. Yeah, it's a weird mix mm-hmm. when you actually look at the whole thing. The better one was 94, right? I didn't even like know that Nine existed. Nails had one of their best shows ever in 94, right? Was it more low key, like in the sense of like it wasn't all the all these mega acts, or was it just more like oh they just didn't riot like a bunch of bunch of fucking? I think episodes. it was just wild, and it, it <laughs> rained all weekend. It was all a big mud pit. Ninety four, ninety four, yeah. Metallica, right? Nine Inch Nails, Metallica. I, I didn't even know that existed until I watched this documentary. Yeah. I remember that, like that it, it had existed, but it was always like the forgotten Woodstock because the first and then the shit show of 99 yeah james brown kicked off woodstock 99 <laughs> like i didn't remember that like that's uh-uh. wild and then he <laughs> probably, he probably <laughs> got the fuck out of there he was the man james that. brown fuck yeah that's fantastic <laughs> get down <laughs> <laughs> james oh. brown used to go on howard all the time he's fantastic yeah, he, he's awesome <laughs> <laughs> that would have been fun to see who else are they showing? Cheryl Crow. Yeah. People were yelling at her like to show her tits yeah, show and stuff. Yeah, your tits, Cheryl Crow. She's like, you got to pay a lot more than this to see my tits. Guys in the 90s were very fucking aggressive. It was, I think it could be said guys now are very fucking aggressive. I don't yeah. know. Like just watching those dudes. Like I've never acted like that. Mm-mm. It's really very well, strange. Good Christian boys, right? I follow Jesus, not the yeah. crowd. I want to see Jesus's tits, not women's tits. <laughs> Jesus had nice boobies from what I heard. <laughs> Till they put a nail through them. <laughs> oh boy. We're off to a great start here. I don't know if you should be allowed to have vodka Gatorade. <laughs> Whoever suggested that, fuck you, pal. What are you doing? Um, so anyways, it was a long three weeks, that old Diener. <laughs> yeah. It was something breaking off uh what test tube glass vials and young boys urethras like yeah like these little some, glass things from the electric company yeah, there's a lot of horrific uh stuff i guess in that series which is why we decided to do a little fun we always like the poltergeist stories right? i like it a lot better people seem to enjoy them it's fun to debate whether or not you believe in each uh, you know the individual stories and this one is fucking modern times very yeah. recent. Yeah. Which makes it a little more interesting, I think. In I think so, too. In facets. Because they could have fucking busted out their Android and was just like, click, there's a picture of that. That is uh, <laughs> one one of the questions I have for, for this episode, Mike. Yes. See? Absolutely. <laughs> well, then before I ask more questions, let's dive in. <laughs> so this story is centered around a young family in South Shields, England. All of their names have been changed to aliases for their privacy, and as far as I know, they've never been publicly identified. The couple was in their early to mid-30s, named Marianne and her boyfriend Mark, and they had a three-year-old son named Robert. Mark with a C, right? That's yes. questionable already. Like Mark Marrow, obviously, the wild man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you can have babies without being married. Oh, yeah, that's... I mean, they're not legitimate in the eyes of the Lord, but they're... Still here, I guess. Okay, got it. <laughs> I mean, Bible Mark is with a K, so that's my Mark. Biblical Mark. Mark C, I don't recognize. <laughs> Hashtag not my Mark. Not my Mark. <laughs> <laughs> On Monday, June 3rd, 2006, England was in the middle of a heat wave. Marianne was opening windows around their house trying to get a breeze to come in, but she wasn't having much luck. Because no one has air conditioning. Yeah, they didn't. It doesn't seem like they planned for that over there because they don't really have to. And it was a big problem this year. It was pushing uh, 105 degrees in England, and oh. like one percent of the population in Europe has uh, air conditioners. I would lay down right? and just die. Can you imagine? It's 105 oh. outside, and you don't have fucking air conditioning. Dave, if it crosses 80, I'm suffering. Yes, with air condition. I have to go check the mail, and I got to drink a gallon of water when I get home just to survive. Terrible. Terrible. I was bitching today, standing outside school, waiting for my kids. I'm like, the sun is too fucking hot. I'm done with this. The sun was hot today. What are you doing outside in the daylight, pal? Yeah. Come on. I got responsibilities. <laughs> You're out to put an umbrella. <laughs> I take care of my kids. <laughs> I mean, you could just sit in your living with the binoculars and just be like, all right, I see him coming out. <laughs> Yelling to the teacher, I'm here. Right here, send him over. No, it's fine. Just let him run across the street. <laughs> But yeah, no one has air over there, so 
Yeah. It's crazy. I was there when I did my trip years ago. It was 2008. And I was, it was the end of May, 2008. And I was able to wear long pants the entire time. Long pants and a t-shirt. What time of year? End of May, 2008. <laughs> You're not hearing a word I'm saying. <laughs> All right, well, end of May. I literally or, said end of May 2008. You go, what time of year? End of May. No, I, was, I was pouring my drink. I know. You almost dropped the ice. You almost had a mic situation where you spilled the fucking ice. So it was end of May in 2008, and I could I was able to wear long pants and a t-shirt the whole time. Well, that's how it should be and at the end of May. Like, that's yeah. how it was. Right. Like, you know, and this is just what? A few days later, June 3rd. Yeah. So I think this year was much worse with the heat wave they had oh, uh, a couple weeks ago. World's ending, folks. Hope you have plans. <laughs> Can we start a GoFundMe to send them some air conditioners? Sure. They need it, right? It's for a cause. Air conditioners for the UK. <laughs> <laughs> dot, 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 for a cause. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark took Robert out to the store to get some popsicles or something along those lines. So while they were gone, Marianne was straightening up the house. Marianne picked up some of Robert's toys from the living room and took them up to his bedroom. When Marianne opened Robert's door, she was hit with a gust of cold air. She should be happy about that, right? <laughs> like sweating her balls off. She looked around the room for a split second, um, and she thought she saw a figure standing by Robert's bed, like out of the corner of her eye. Marianne put Robert's toys in the toy chest, and as she was walking out of the room, she felt like someone poked her in the back real quick. She chalked it up to her mind playing tricks on her from being too hot and just went about her day. So she's the only one in the house. Right. Only one there. They're a solitary person. Two days later, Marianne was downstairs playing with Robert when Mark called out to her from upstairs. Marianne walked up to see what was going on. And as soon as she got up to the top, Mark said, quote, did you do this? Marianne's like, you didn't even give me a chance to get up here to actually tell me what was wrong. But she looked up and hanging by its reins from the latch to their attic was Robert's rocking horse. Did she say, hold your rocking horses? <laughs> Wait till I get up there, fella. Mark with a C. I was going to say, such a typical answer. Wait for me to get up the steps. I'm not even there yet. I'm not even in that room. I can't even hear what you're saying. It's not my rocking horse. Our impressions of women are so spot on. <laughs> and not stereotypical or offensive at all. <laughs> Mary Ann said that she didn't do that. Like, why would she? And Mark and her stood there and stared at the horse for a couple moments until Marianne pulled it down and took the horse back to Robert's room. All right, so at this point, both of these people probably assume that the other one is fucking with them, right? Especially with the horse thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because you see that. Because that, like, that's not an accident that you have to make yeah. an effort to make that happen. Yeah. That's not, I pushed this there by accident. Right, or I moved it when I was yeah. vacuuming and forgot to put it back. Do they have vacuums over there in the UK? I don't, they don't, have, I don't know. <laughs> they have electricity? I think they do. <laughs> Maybe they just have I mean, like I a dustpan in a They room. have electricity, but I, never, I didn't see one vacuum. Really? Just saying. I'm just trying to put myself in that scenario where we're looking up at the Sen ceiling. Scenario. <laughs> scenario, yeah, sorry. Just dipshit say. <laughs> And the rocking horse is hanging upside down. And you're like, that's creepy, though. He's like, well, I didn't do it. And she's like, oh, I didn't do it. And clearly the three year old's not doing that. <laughs> so he's like, oh, I think this bitch is lying. <laughs> Fuck on me. And she's like, the mark with a C is lying. <laughs> Fuck on me. That's my assessment. At this so you point. think there's hostility building between them now? I would think so. Probably getting irritated that uh, the other person's fucking with them, right? But you know them well enough that you probably know like their poker face and like when they're being honest. So I don't know. I mean, you could be, but like, yeah. but your mind also is probably telling you like, well, of course it was them because it's, it's not a poltergeist. It's, it's the first incident in here. So you're not, your mind's not going to go, well, it's some, well, fuck, I'm moving. <laughs> right. Some <laughs> thing in my live ghost specter, mm -hmm. or whatever living in my house. So of yeah. course you're going to assume it's the other person. The incident with the rocking horse happened on June 5th. Then on the morning of June 9th, Marion was walking up to Robert's bedroom. And when she reached the stairs, she looked up to see a small chair from Robert's room sitting perfectly at the top of the stairs. As far as Mary knew, Mark and Robert had been downstairs all morning. According to her, she didn't think much of it, just that it was weird and took the chair back to Robert's room. 
Marianne then went to her bedroom, and when she came out a few minutes later, Robert's rocking horse was sitting outside of the room with the door closed. This stopped Marianne in her tracks because when she put the chair back in Robert's room, she closed the door, and as far as she could hear, Mark was still downstairs with Robert. So I think the hair on the back of your neck stands up at this point when you see that. Yeah. Rocking my horses, reaction. Rocking horses are kind of creepy in general because mm. like they kind of rock for a little bit after you're done with them. So like if you walk by a room and you just kind of see this thing slowly rocking, you're like, what the fuck? And plus Mark C, right? Not very trustworthy. <laughs> also who, that. Who knows? Also that. <laughs> I mean, he's you never still, know about that guy. He's still better than two star Mark, but. <laughs> You know, everyone's better than two star Mark. Like, <laughs> I mean, it, this isn't just the chair rocking, though. It's in a different position. It's completely out of a room with the doors. Yeah, closed. like with no possible explanation. So that creeps me out immediately. Marianne put the horse back in Robert's room and went down to talk to Mark about what happened. Mark wanted to check out Robert's room, so the two of them walked to the stairs to find toys scattered all over the floor at the top of the staircase. Together, they picked up the toys to take them back to Robert's room, where they found random letters drawn in red crayon on the door. This really scared Marianne because she knew for a fact that there wasn't anything written on the door before. Marianne told Mark she wanted to get out of the house for a while to try and make sense of what was going on, so they grabbed Robert and left. When they got home, they found a large chest of drawers had been moved to the top of the stairs and Robert's bed had been moved across his room. At that point, they decided to reach out to their church and a priest came out to bless the house. This is fairly recent, so I'm going to make the assumption they have cell phones with cameras. Are they taking pictures of anything at this (laughs) point? Um. Like, this is not something we could ask with poltergeists in the past, but when we start getting into more recent modern stories, that has to be the first question. 2006? Everyone has a phone in their pocket at all times. But I guess I would also think, like, okay, there's a a, a, a rocking horse hanging from the ceiling. I'm going to take a picture of it. What does that prove? Like, anyone could just do that, or anyone could move a horse and close a bedroom door. I guess you could take the photo, but like even if I saw it, I'd be like, okay, well, you just fucking did that. Like it's a, a video valid point, there's a, no context. Sure. Yeah, a video would be more, but again, you're not seeing it yet. Or like a video of hearing the knocking. I don't think there's Spoiler any alert reason. From page three, sorry. <laughs> I don't feel like there's any reason for them to be taking pictures at this point. Okay. I have questions about the pictures later on when investigators get involved. Okay. Why well, those we'll, aren't out in the we'll world? We'll put a pin in this till later. Then I want to hang something. I want to. I want to hang Beef Austin like by his uh, tail from from a doorknob, and then just take a picture and send it to you guys and be like, "Something's going on." <laughs> <laughs> oh He's like, the only thing going on, I'm kicking ass, motherfuckers. <laughs> the next photo you get is me laid out cold <laughs> with him standing over me drinking beers. <laughs> and he's got stone, stone cold beef stunned. That's what I get for fucking with him, I guess. That's what you deserve, pal. <laughs> the blessing seemed to make the activity stop until the night of June 13th when Marianne was on her way upstairs and she got to the staircase at the top was one of Robert's small chairs but this time it had a stuffed rabbit sitting on it. Marianne went to Mark, and the two of them walked upstairs together and found that next to the stuffed rabbit was a razor blade, like one that would be in a box cutter. Marianne and Mark were adamant that they had no clue where a blade like that would come from, but they went into Robert's room to check on him, and he was sleeping. So the rabbit didn't talk or anything? No, it was like a stuffed animal. Hmm. I know, but I feel like a poltergeist oh, scenario could animate this little <laughs> rabbit to start talking. I don't know why I think a real rabbit would talk. <laughs> I know it was stuffed, but I... <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> you asked the question, which was ridiculous in itself. But then Ian answers like, no, it didn't talk, idiot. It's a stuffed animal. <laughs> Because obviously a real real <laughs> rabbit would be like, yeah, I'm going to fucking cut that little kid. He's like, yeah, what's up, Doc? <laughs> he 
It's like no dipshit. It was stuffed. <laughs> Oh, good, good info, Ian. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so they went into Robert's room and he was sleeping. Um, and Mary and Mark crouched down next to his bed, kind of thinking like, what the hell is going on? And that's when they heard a creaking sound. That creaking kept getting louder until they realized that the chest of drawers was rocking back and forth. As soon as Mark stood up to hold the furniture still, The chest of drawers fell onto the bed where Robert was sleeping. So was it rocking back and forth and moving forward towards the bed at the same time? Yeah, it seemed like it was like inching. Yeah. That's creepy. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but that chest should have been tethered to the wall as a child safety measure, should it not? If it's within reach of a bed, I would think, yeah. Yeah. Do they don't love their kids in, in the UK? <laughs> they don't do stuff like that? Isn't that what they have to do in California? Like with earthquake, like in earthquake zones and stuff, like tether things to the walls? Are they still, is that still a thing? I, I Most chests or things, TV stands, things like that that you get, I think they say that you should tether them to the wall. Like everywhere or just measure. like in like the high like earthquake I don't zones? know. I've like, gotten stuff that said that before. I've never tethered anything to a wall, but we also like, you know. Yeah. I don't have, we're not in a, a zone where we're going to have earthquakes all the That's time. That's a good question. I don't have little kids around the crush, so I don't just ignore that part. <laughs> also, but. ask me if I know how to tether anything to a wall. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm going to take a belt and put it around the, the chest and then use duct tape to put it against the wall. Hey, oh, yeah. is, is it not tethered to the wall? <laughs> tethered, motherfucker. <laughs> Boom, just did a manly. <laughs> So Mark and uh, Marianne were like, they were terrified that this chest just crushed their son. But the way it landed left Robert untouched. Like the chest was stopped by an end table at an angle. At that point, Marianne packed some bags and they went to stay at her mother's house. Now what I will say about this point, this at this point in the story with the, the chest of drawers or whatever, very similar to the Enfield poltergeist. Yes. A lot of stuff going on with the chest of drawers in that story. So I was going to make that point later, but I feel like some of the stuff going on here is a composite of things pulled from a lot of different poltergeists. Like the the crayon thing, I believe, is the red rum scene from The Shining. Yeah. And then this stuff's <laughs> from the Enfield poltergeist. Like, but there's only so much a poltergeist can do. Well, I would don't know. He, is would, that would true? A poltergeist, I mean, uh, would a poltergeist not do the same things? Opening drawers and cabinets and... And but just the red crayon and I, I don't well, know. Well, it's the most terrifying color, right? Is that right? The color of blood. It, seem, <laughs> it seems like a composite of other stories from the past. This was the first hint to me that there was something yeah. amiss going yeah. on here. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. Art Bell always tells people to move out of their house immediately. Like that's not realistic. Well, I don't know why he says that. In all fairness, he a lot of times says, "I would be out of that house as fast as my legs would take me." True. Well, Art's an elitist. Like not every person (laughs) can just leave. Art, (laughs) just move across the world and start doing a show from over there. So Mark and Marianne, they eventually had to come back to their house, and Marianne started to keep a log of everything that was going on in the house classic poltergeist knocking sounds like you can't figure out where the knocking is coming from more furniture moving around small toys like marbles or legos being thrown across the room like they almost materialized out of thin air then that materializing started to get bigger than legos or toy cars like is this stuff materializing things that they didn't have in their house no it's stuff they have in their house okay yeah. No, right. it's stuff they had in their house. Like if things materialize out of thin air, they're like, yeah, that's not mine. Think of Maybe like, that's a different story. And like it's the, time to leave because then it's yeah. not someone fucking with you. The black monk of Pontefract, remember, mm-hmm. there would be shit like in a different room would all of a sudden pop up in the room people were right, in. Right. They're like, what the fuck is happening? Like eggs would break from the kitchen. They would break in other rooms. Okay. Similar to okay. what's. All right. Fair enough. What's happening here. Or what room you break an egg in. If it leads to me eating an omelet, you go ahead and do it. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. Somebody's hungry. So Mary Ann was in Robert's room and she set down her cup of coffee on the chest of drawers and forgot it behind. Mary Ann left the room and shut the door behind her. Not long after, she heard a loud crash 
at the top of the stairs and her coffee mug was just smashed everywhere. But Robert's door was still shut again, kind of like mm. that whole black monk of Pontefract type mm. thing. There, you know what I noticed? There's no fun period. Like, do you remember at the beginning of Poltergeist, there was fun period. Like she put the uh, football helmet on the on the little girl and she's sliding her across the kitchen floor. Like, oh, this is awesome. Look at this, <laughs> this new house. It's great. She's sliding across the floor. <laughs> Before their world turned into hell, but there's no fun period. This is just hanging a horse from a ceiling. (laughs) Yeah, this didn't usually um, poltergeist start off with like this, this little knocking and things progress from there. I don't know, you know, if this is real, maybe they just didn't pay attention. Maybe those other ones are fake and this is real. And that really poltergeists are just, you know, straight to the good stuff, mm. the hard stuff. Are you suggesting a movie's not real? A movie you've never seen is not real? Like poltergeist <laughs> movie? <laughs> I'm not suggesting anything. I'm just saying, I'm supposing over here. We just don't know. Maybe Mark with a C is the proper way to spell it. And we've been wrong. Mm, let's not get carried away here. That's a ridiculous <laughs> spelling of the name Mark. Well, you Biblical just- Mark is all that counts. M-A-R-K. I mean, you can't really argue with that. Jesus would not have hung out with an M-A-R-C. Let me no, just like, get that. fucked, asshole. What are you doing, you piece of shit? Get away from me. And he would have like, he would have like 300. <laughs> this is Sparta. Just kicked him away down a hill or something. Just for having a fucking name with a C in it. Another detail that pointed to the entity getting stronger was the use of Robert's Etch-A-Sketch doodle pad like that gimmick magnetic board with a pen that you slide it to erase. Marianne would find the letter combinations CU or BA written all over the board just over and over again. Like the entity was trying to figure out how to write, which I find that very fucking creepy. Mm. Just that, that whole like trying to figure Mm. out how to speak. Maybe Robert just wanted to go to Cuba. Do you ever think about that? (sighs) I didn't smoke some cigars (laughs) about that. I didn't put that. Maybe together. the C and Mark stood for Cuba. Did you ever think maybe that's that? maybe Mark was laying the hints <laughs> then to, to Marianne. Just maybe the yeah. C and Mark stood for Castro. He was a commie. Commie Castro <laughs> Mark. Did you ever think about that? Well, if he's a commie, he deserves everything he gets. <laughs> By the way, I've used that pickup line before. I doodle your pad. <laughs> you know, uh, I, <laughs> update. It did not work. <laughs> You got to use the, uh, never mind. <laughs> wow. If Gatorade Vodka Dave censored himself, that would have for sure been one of those wake up tomorrow. Hey, we got to cut that motherfucker. <laughs> yep. Dave, trust your initial judgment. <laughs> so this is just a small portion of Marianne's notes. Once they got back from staying at her parents' house, the activity was all day, every day, almost like the entity was punishing them for trying to leave. And there were witnesses to this activity, including Marianne's mother, father, and her brother. Okay, now we're talking. I like to see eyewitness firsthand accounts. It it helps the story. It does, very much so. Gives you more to kind of digest and debate. It's what I always look for in these, in these stories. Yeah. This is the point in the story where paranormal investigators Darren Ritson and Mike Howell enter the story. Um, Are these guys experts? They have credentials? Are uh, they legitimate? They've written a lot of books. Okay. They, they wrote, took an online course. So They wrote the book that I used for this okay. that I read. Fair enough. Just it, asking the questions. I will say it was a good book, but okay. it could have been... Like maybe a pamphlet, maybe if uh, it just focused on the story. There's a lot of uh, um, pamphlet. Yeah, there's a lot of repetitive, like what a poltergeist is. Yeah, in there. So. Look, when you're not really an author and you're trying to make a book, you know, I think when you run out of source material, you keep repeating yourself. Or that's when you like get a, you know, no pun intended, a ghostwriter and have mm. someone help you who knows what they're doing. Who knows how to like, you know, kind of fluff a little bit yeah. and take those three sentences and make it, you know, a couple pages. Do you remember the curb year when the Seinfeld reunion curb year and George's book came out and Jason Alexander's book and it was 
It was very small, and Larry's like, eh, it's more like a pamphlet. It was an acting book. Like, he was uh, like, like <laughs> acting without acting. Acting without acting, something like that. And, and then uh, Larry and Jerry were both like, eh, is this a pamphlet? Yeah, it's more like a pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> One day at work, Darren was approached by a coworker who told him her friend's daughter was having issues that sounded like a ghost haunting. Wait, so he's at work, so they're like part-time ghost hunters? I think it's tough to be a full time ghost right. hunter. You so, have to be a well, full. Oh, like, okay. Unless, yeah. unless you fucking get that reality TV show <laughs> yeah. money. Yeah. Holy shit, they just touched my toe. We gotta get out of here. <laughs> They're trying to kill us. That's what, see? <laughs> yeah, you gotta be that guy to do it full time. So you can't be that great if you're a part time ghost hunter. It's kind of like if you're a part time podcast. Never mind. Let's go on. <laughs> <laughs> Through email, Darren contacted Marianne's mother, June. June and Darren wrote back and forth a couple times, and then June gave Darren a list of things that were going on in the house, as well as Marianne's phone number. Once Darren got a list of the occurrences from June, he was like, oh, this is way more advanced than I was, uh, than it was initially described, because three-year-old Robert had seemed to have made contact with something. June's list read, quote, Shower has mysteriously turned on. Robert has seen a lady in his bedroom and has talked to her. General noises and bumps have been heard when no one is around. The blinds keep being taken down in Robert's room. Robert has seen a little boy called Sam and plays with him in his room. Marion and Mark have heard a voice on the baby monitor telling Robert that he was going to fall out of bed. That's super creepy. That is creepy as fuck. But, <laughs> yeah. but easy to hack if you're in anyone's network. Like, there's a lot yeah. of stories about that. Oh, yeah. There's terrifying stories yeah, of that. Yeah. yeah. Do you think maybe something like that happened and then that sparked them to kind of run with all of We'll get to I, I don't know. This this kind of reminds me of the, the house on Haunted Hill. Where you, you remember that? that What's the book? And it was the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the, the, the miniseries on Netflix. The Bent Neck Lady. The Bent Neck Lady. Like, super creepy. Just the kids would see him walking around at night. Yeah. And it, it, that's what kind of i conjure up when i when i think about this all right we'll go back to the list a vase or a vase on the <laughs> stair landing keeps moving from one side to another coats are thrown up the stairs a chair has been wedged up to the door in robert's room robert's table and chair found on the landing marianne and her dad were standing at back door when a cup from robert's room landed in the garden and smashed the window was closed and the blind was down Robert's rocking horse keeps getting moved and turned upside down. Ornaments keep getting moved. Last night, June 19th, 2006, I went to Marion's house for the first time since all this happened in the last couple of weeks. We all went to Robert's room while he got ready for bed. We were there for about 10 minutes. Then we all went downstairs together while Robert had his supper. After approximately 20 minutes, we all went back upstairs together into Robert's room when we noticed his chair had gone. It was in Marion's room, and the door was shut. I had stood in the doorway before we went downstairs, and the door was definitely open. If you had surveillance cameras in the house, what do you think you would have seen? Because at this point... Well, I think that's like an end discussion of the conversation, is it not, Dave? Like, if all these things are happening to me, that's my... I would have surveillance cameras up all over the house already. But maybe they couldn't afford that, though. They, you know, they weren't quite in a place to do mm. that. I just think if I if all these unexplained things happen when I'm not in a room, my first thought is I'm I'm putting up surveillance, you know, paranormal activity. I don't like, disagree. That's the first thing I would do. So I suspect they would all stop then. When and at I, the very when least, I took this stuff. At the very least, Dave, do you think you'll make millions and upon millions of dollars like paranormal activity did? Eventually, Marianne got a hold of Darren and told him to come to their house and just do whatever he needed to do to get this thing out of their house. Um. So it, would, it kind of sounds like the the guys that came to the poltergeist house to investigate, right? In the movie, Poltergeist. Yeah. <laughs> okay. A 2015 Just, movie made by uh, Martin Scorsese. Poltergeist. Got it. We're just going to ignore that comment. Uh, go on, Ian. So when they got there, Marianne showed Darren and Mike around the house and then took them to Robert's room, where most of the activity seemed to be focused. Everything was calm 
in the house for about four hours and then knocking started followed by Legos being thrown from various angles. Before Darren and Mike left on that first day, they set up a bunch of audio and video equipment. So they did, they had um, like these motion sensors set mm-hmm. up and, and stuff like that. So they would pick things up. Would they pick up? Um, according to the book, um, the first night that they went home, they listened back to the audio and they picked up a lot of uh, like whispering sounds and huh. and weird shit like that, like the EVP type stuff. Right. You know, it's not out there to listen to. That's weird. <laughs> well, and, and that's fair, though, given that, you know, it's 2006. This should be all over the Internet. That is my issue that we'll, we'll talk about in a little while. Okay. They should have been faxing this into Art Bell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we would have had, you know. All the proof we needed. All, everything we would have needed. So as days went by, the activity grew in strength. Now there were incidents where Marianne would be getting something out of a closet and the door would close behind her. And then it would be like someone was pushing the door shut and wouldn't let her out. Robert started talking about a man being in his wardrobe and that this man sometimes floated over his bed. Then one afternoon, Mary Ann was making Robert a snack and she asked him to get off the floor and go sit on the couch to eat to which Robert said he couldn't because the man was sitting there. Sure enough, Marianne looked at the couch and there was an indentation in the cushion that looked like someone was sitting there. And then the cushion went up, like went back to normal, like the entity stood up. Right out of Enfield Poltergeist, right? Yeah. It's a scene out of The Conjuring too, right? Yeah. All right. That's what I thought. Can you imagine, though, your three-year-old like just looking at you and just being like, no, I can't. There's, Mom, there's a fucking dude sitting there. Like, <laughs> Open your eyes. It would be very creepy. A three-year-old. is very creepy. If there was a, just a picture or a video of the story. The indentation. Oh, okay. Now, that's something you take a picture of, the indentation. Yeah. Because you can't kayfabe that. E- yeah, you can have a kid bounce on the couch real quick. But it's not, not going to look like a person <laughs> sitting. You a video. It's not going to look like a person sitting. I mean, I mean, if, if there's, okay, video, picture, fine. But still, like, you know. A kid jumping, it could look different than a butt indentation in a couch. All I'm going to say is you can sell... One of the two. Yeah. You can sell this stuff in the 70s, but when everyone has a phone in their pocket, it's a little harder to sell. Exactly. This kind of stuff. Enfield even had pictures. They did. There's pictures of that girl floating up in the air. There's a lot of good memes, too, of people like... Standing on Look, top of yeah, her. At least, at least so. they made the effort. They're like, hey, <laughs> right. jump, on, jump on your bed. Let's do something with this. Right, like, that wasn't real, like, but they put yeah. the effort in. At least, you know, exactly. make me believe. Make me feel like you tried to, 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 you know, to work me here. Yeah, but when you're in 2006 and you don't put the effort in, you're just doing a composite of The Shining and the, right. and feel Poltergeist. Like, come on, you got to do better than that. Because if you did a video then and then you saw, like, the indentation shift a little... Now we're talking. Another time, Robert went up to Marianne while she was cooking, and he whispered to her that uh, the man was in the cupboard. Then all of a sudden, the cupboard door flew open. There was also one time that Robert was wrapped. He was sleeping, and they couldn't see him on the baby monitor, and they found him like wrapped super tight, like uh, what do they call that, swaddling Mm -hmm. with the baby. Like, he was, like, that out of his bed in a whole different room. Like, there was no way this oh, kid geez. did that to himself. Mm. They also asked Darren and Mike to do smudging rituals. What's that? Like where, you burn, where you burn sage mm. to, like, kind of cleanse. All over the house. Yeah. Um, that worked for a little bit, but not very, you know, just like the priest thing came back. At that point, Marianne had enough. She stormed into Robert's room and started yelling for the entity to stop. In response, Marianne heard a crash from one of the kitchen cupboards. When she went downstairs and opened the door, out fell the Etch-A-Sketch doodle board with the words, quote, I'm sorry, written on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're forgiven. Well, you're forgiven. That's, that's fine. That. As long as you're sorry. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> you know, I read this Etch-A-Sketch, and I'm like, when I was a kid, Etch-A-Sketch was two little knobs, and you had to try yeah. to draw. I'm like, I can't fucking draw. It's two knobs. I looked up like it's really difficult. It's terrible. That's what I thought too. I'm like etch a sketch is just the knob one, but right. the company made the the doodle board version too. They still have that now. Yeah, mm. you can kind of. It's probably a lot easier. 
He was right on. Do you see some of the artwork those people do on Etch a Sketches, though? It's, it's crazy. insane. Yeah, I just want to go grab one and shake it once. And <laughs> run. I also get the same like like feeling when I'm around a bunch of like motorcycles. Like I just want to domino effect, push them, and then just fucking run. Where where would you rather go and cause trouble at the Etch a Sketch National Championship or at the Hell's Angels National Harley Championship? Would you rather fuck up an Etch a Sketch or fuck up a uh, hundred Harleys in a row? Obviously. I'm going to fuck up the edge. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you were thinking about it there. Uh, no. Also, you know, one takes time. One costs a lot of money. So <laughs> you can't sue me for time. And knock all the Harleys down like Pee Wee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I say we let him go. Robert alternated between seeing a woman, a man, or a little boy named Sammy. The paranormal investigators, Darren and Mike, debated on whether they were all three separate entities or just a single poltergeist figuring out how to manifest itself into different forms. They came to believe that who they were communicating with was a poltergeist who had manifested into a little boy named Sammy. Through the Etch-A-Sketch, they were able to communicate with Sammy and Sammy would write things like he loved Robert or that he was scared of the family dog. Or things like red rum, red, <laughs> red rum. <laughs> to Darren and Mike's credit, they weren't blinded by the whole believing so much that they just overlooked things um, like signs of a hoax. And they took pictures of the Atcha sketch. Then they took those pictures to two separate handwriting experts with samples of Marianne, Mark, and Robert's handwriting. Both expert opinions were that the messages written on the etch sketch were made by Mark trying to make his handwriting look like a child's. What's the accuracy, though, of an etch sketch Like, isn't that all just, like, magnet-type yeah, stuff? Yeah, but, I mean, it's... Yeah, but we've also discussed the accuracy of handwriting analysis before too and it's, it's not very good let alone no, with an extra it's not real which yeah. is not something you typically write on this is not something i will accept as expert <laughs> like no. look at my signature on like no. a document with a pen Absolutely not look at my signature on a document with a pen and then look at me like at like a like one of the gas stations where you have to like sign on like a little ipad yeah. gimmick with your finger I don't even look human I on just, the ipad I just thing. scribble it. I like care. i just literally just make a line Man. and i hit accept there's pictures of the handwriting. Like there's, there? Yeah, there's pictures okay. out there of the etch sketch and what it looked like. But handwriting analysis is not... Are you saying it's... Um, a legitimate science. Is it, you know, lie detector worthy? Thing. We've talked about handwriting analysis before. I know, remember we have. Very, but there's also handwriting experts out there. Not so what are, are we saying they're frauds? Yes, we are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. They're frauds. If you're a handwriting analyst, analyst, Man. you're a fraud. <laughs> I emphatically state here and now that if you're a handwriting analyst, you're a fraud. Analysis. <laughs> Analysis. How many other I'm making up words, <laughs> motherfucker! How many syllables can I fit in this word? <laughs> and I don't remember our, which As opposed to me, who's an analyst. <laughs> And am I a fraud, Dave? No, you're a <laughs> balls deep analyst. <laughs> I accept you as you are. <laughs> Thank you, pal. <laughs> so at this point, with with this information, everyone's focused on Mark. Like, hey man, you're fucking yeah, wasting everybody's Mark time. Mark with a C, fuck oh, we <laughs> like, busted you. I like to think they're all reading the report and like all at once they like slowly look, turn their heads to look at Mark, <laughs> and he's just like sitting there like with a cocktail, like what the fuck did I do? <laughs> Well, and everybody's kind of like, you're scaring the fuck out of your girlfriend and your son hoaxing this shit. But Mark swore that he wasn't doing anything like that. Then phone calls started. Marianne, Darren, and Mike would all be receiving multiple calls from Mark's cell phone number just over and over again. All four of them sat down at a table and set their phones out with Mark's phone. So everyone's phones are on the table and the calls continued with Mark's phone not being touched. In Mike and Darren's mind, this proved that Mark wasn't faking all of this. When they got the courage to answer one of the phones, there was a robotic voice on the other end saying hello just over and over again. Hello. 
<laughs> Hello, this is Mark. It's easy to spoof robotic calls from my phone. Ask me how. I'll tell you. It's very easy. Like, it's not hard to spoof a call from Mark's but phone. But over and over Stop again? it. Wait, you mean like someone else can do it or Mark could do Mark it? Mark can do it. You just set up a script like a, an hour before and then... Like, that's not hard. Look, this guy didn't have air conditioning. Do you really think he's diving into this kind of stuff? I, look, I'm just saying it's not hard to spoof. In 2006, it's not hard to spoof. I'm him. just saying if we're going to shit on anybody in this story, I don't think Mark's the one that we're going to be shitting on. You're defending Mark of the Sea. You think he's uh, not the guy? First of all. It, it is not even his real name. Are you Mike with it a C? It is not even his real it's name. Real, it's your real name, Mice? Are you Mike, Mike with a C? I could be a Mick. I could be a Mick. Mark's not even his real name. That's his kayfabe name they gave him. And it's the authors who gave it to him who are the ones who writ, wrote this damn thing. That's true. That's a, that's a working name. Just saying. That's That's a good point. So maybe Darren's the one to blame for this. And Mike. All I'm yeah. saying is it's easy. Or mice, as Dave would say. <laughs> it's easy to spoof a phone number and do that. There were also text messages that started to get sent that said, die, bitch. This was to Marianne's phone saying, die, bitch. Uh, knives were being thrown around the house. Was the die, bitch from Mark's phone or just in general? I think Mark's phone. A no number. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and there there's pictures of uh mark was getting like scratches down his chest and stuff can't oh. fake can't fake that <laughs> no one's gonna scratch their own chest so i saw a lot of uh hate for this story based on the the text messages and the cell phones like a poltergeist or a ghost wouldn't be able to do something like that i don't understand what the difference between like writing on something you know, like a ghost wrote down versus text message. Like if they're able to control a pen and paper, they can mm -hmm. definitely control a phone, right? What's the difference? I don't think just because it's modern, it makes it less credible. Right. That's what it almost seemed like. It's like, well, why isn't that believable? Why can't you believe that a text message is sent versus? I think because well, people think that with technology, you can do more things now. So yeah. like, like Dave was saying, you can get on a website and just have a call a call from any number show up on your phone and that's that true. It. So people are more skeptical of it. Hello, Excuse Mike. Me. This is uh, <laughs> Mrs. Hildebrand from your bank. Um, <laughs> can I get your password, your social security number. The, I need to transfer some money. <laughs> Check my phone number. It shows the bank number. Not a hacker spammer. Just for the record, anybody who's not already in my phone instantly gets sent a voicemail anyway. So I screen every uh, Mike, it's Mrs. Hildebrand again. I need your social security number. I ain't given call me back. So I want a wire transfer outgoing to Nigerian Prince for $100,000. Oh, well. If you're going to marry a Nigerian prince, Mrs. Hildebrand, of course. Take all my money. Uh, hello, Mike. Uh, Mrs. Hild Vice President, Mrs. Hildebrand from the bank. Um, we've heard back from you. The Niger each, Niger time, each time her title gets bigger That's and right. bigger, Niger but it's still Mrs. Hildebrand. Nigerian prince, uh, waiting for your $100,000 transfer. Please call back with your PIN authorization number. Next time she's Chief Justice <laughs> of the local branch. Uh, I'm at Mike. Uh, Mike, uh, hello, this is uh, President Hildebrand of the United States of America. I'm looking for your PIN number to transfer your whole account to the Nigerian Prince Mufasa. What can you do with that? You can't argue it. You can't argue it, right? Mufasa. <laughs> He's dipping a lion can. <laughs> A guy who says he's never watched Disney movies. Please call he me just, back. He just went old school. Hello, Mike. This is the God. I mean, Mrs. Hildebrand. I'm the ruler of the universe. I haven't heard from you. I need your pin number. So there's something to be said about technology. It makes it easier yeah. to hoax this stuff. That's true. Mike. Um, <laughs> 
I'm wondering if you'll eat my 80 year old hairy <laughs> pussy if you won't give me your pin number. Wow. This is uh, Mrs. Hildebrand, Mrs. the bank Hildebrand. again. We should have led with that, first of all. Where were you 15 <laughs> calls ago? I just ago? want you to lap my labia. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't know what a clit is, but if you could just pawn your tongue in my pussy, my vulva would be okay. That sounds fantastic. Let's do it. <laughs> five pages of notes that we have made in an hour and a half. Fuck. <laughs> my pussy is waiting for you. Oh, I'm so brand. I'll be there. I'll see you next week. My stomach hurts. At the usual spot. <laughs> take your, take your blue chew. If you're nice and you kiss me, I'll let you put it in my asshole. <laughs> How did we get to this? I don't know. What, what did, we went from being a little hoax of poltergeist to some <laughs> old woman harassing me. <laughs> Sexually harassing me. <laughs> Call it courting. It's not harassment. I just want you balls deep in me, Mike. I'll join the club. Again, baby. Mrs. Hildebrand, call me back. <laughs> From the bank. <laughs> so, so at this point. In I'll give you a rim job. <laughs> oh, I'll put gosh. my tongue so far up your asshole. Your colon will be happy. Mrs. Hildebrand, you have a bad back. You shouldn't be doing anything like that in any of those positions. You're 84 years old, for God's sake. Just, that's enough. <laughs> Tastes like pennies. <laughs> so it was September at this point in the story. Little, Ian's like, I don't know where I am. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? <laughs> it's a little over a year since this all started. Um, and Darren told the family that sometimes poltergeists can feed off electronic devices. So he told them to unplug everything at night. Which there is science behind this, at least science in sleeping close to electronics, uh, like close to your head, can cause uneasy feelings. Science. <laughs> A lot of times hauntings. Um, like paranormal investigators will try to rule this out, like ask people, do you, how close is your phone to your head when you sleep at night? Things like that. Um, because people can be extra sensitive to radio frequencies being put off by those electronic devices. So it's really weird and anticlimactic uh, end to the story, but turning off the electronics worked, and that was the end of the haunting. <laughs> and that's the South Shields poltergeist. I laughed aloud at the end of the story. I'm like, I was like, I guess that's it. Yeah, Turn over. your fucking phone off, you fucking British asshole. And that's, how, <laughs> that's how the book ended, too. It, there was a lot of this, like, what is a poltergeist? See, and this whole debate. In of, my mind, it's the authors. They made this whole thing up. I don't think this family even existed. Well, the, my issue with it was that it, was, it kept being brought up as, like, the most credible and famous poltergeist case in like recent times i couldn't find much out there like proof wise other than the pictures of the scratches there's a picture with a water bottle sitting on an angle has this been independently verified with um the woman or the boyfriend at all not that i know of i because they if don't it was exist them, they don't exist if it <laughs> they're as real as fucking mm. mrs hildebrand if it was them just making up the story, they fooled Guy Playfair, who was from the Enfield Poltergeist, and uh, that guy was pretty credible, and he did yeah, a bunch of different yeah. investigating. He wrote uh, the foreword for their book. But what did he? What did they show him that made him believe, other than what we talked about? Because I'm not convinced. I, according to the story, there's you know video footage of some of the stuff flying Where's around. Where's the video? Yeah. Where's, then show me. I would love to see that. I was I, very disappointed when I saw like. I want to believe these. Yeah. I personally think this was Mark doing this. That Mark did all I this don't. shit. I don't even think Mark exists. <laughs> I really don't. I think they just concocted yeah. a story about this mm. little family. And like, we haven't heard from the mom. We haven't heard from the dad of like they've Marianne. They've never outed themselves. Nobody yeah. has ever been identified. I don't know. Uh, if this really happened, I, we, would, I would agree it's probably Mark. That perpetrated this. 
I'm not convinced that it actually happened. And I will go on All record right. as saying when these people do come out, then we accuse them of being, you know, looking for the attention and the money and, and, and all this. But like they say, they, this is 2006 and they say they have videos. Well, then we need to see those videos. If you're going to write a book and try to make money off of this mm. and all this proof you yeah. have, then show us the video. And then you're going to have the best selling book, you know, in this whole genre. Yeah. There was a lot of talk of like it had the most credible evidence and stuff in it. I saw some pictures of some scratches and things like that. Nothing. That, yeah, no. That goes back to what we said. No. You can you can work every photo. Yeah. I can I can hang something from the ceiling right now and be like, oh, I walked in and saw this. Right. Uh, hello, Mike. <laughs> Mike is Mrs. Hildebrand. That rocking horse is deep in my vagina. If you want to come and find it. I got proof positive it exists. He's going to fucking make us a tall bar. Now fucking she's going to show up. A little Mrs. Hildebrand. <laughs> My hairy pussy. Was just oh, go Mrs. Right Hildebrand, you got to shave. I'm not touching you. You got to shave. Spread your wrinkles. Make it flat and shave. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thumbs down in this story. There's literally no proof for this. Yeah. So we're all thumbs down it. We just disagree on about where it came from. Yeah, I think Mark perpetrated this. And I'm going more the authors. Mm. Why didn't Mark or the wife ever publicly come out? I don't know. I mean, if it was Mark and that came out, if I was Marianne, I would be super pissed. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. Like, if we take this at what I believe is that those paranormal investigators actually did go there and and research stuff. If I was her, I'd be like, well, what is fucking wrong with you? You freaked out everybody for nothing. Yeah. So you think Mark was uh, making this whole thing up and actually the, these guys that wrote the book went to the house. Mike thinks that there was no such people. Think, they don't even exist. These guys just are like, hey, let book. me write a book. Yes. Make this whole thing up. That's my thought. Mm. What did the authors do after this? Uh, they've written a bunch of books about you know, the paranormal and they hmm. investigate stuff. other stories like this. Like, honestly, I don't know. This was a one off. I just wonder if they ever did anything else that was like the other people came out, like who owned the house and were like, yeah, these people came to our house. They saw shit. That would be interesting. Hmm. I just took a chance on this book. It's a good story. Yeah. It's a fun story. Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't know where I land on. And this is the stuff I like. I like when we can debate. Like I do too. I'm not sure where I land on this though. Like I like the poltergeist stories and the haunting stories where there's a ton of people involved in it. You know, it's not just one set of paranormal investigators and mm -hmm. the family of those people. We talked to, so earlier in the story, we said that that manifested in front of Marianne, her father, her mother, her brother. Have they ever come forward and presented any testimony or evidence to support their claim, sir? Not that I could find. Mm. In all fairness, the authors gave this guy in the name Mark with a C. What does that lead to their credibility? That's true. I, I thumbs down them for, At not, least God. for not giving the biblical M-A-R-K. <laughs> God <laughs> gave his Mark and his made-up story a uh, name with a K. You're absolutely right. <laughs> he wrote one of the Gospels, so you know where he's coming from. Exactly. Hmm. He was there. He saw it all. We don't know if this mark exists. Mm. Mark with a C. I'm C is in cunt. <laughs> it's, it's a little hard, but okay. <laughs> I didn't say Mark's a cunt. I'm just saying C is in cunt. Where's that Sesame Street? I'm not sure where I land on this. Like, Dave, I'm not certain. Like what? You know what state you're in right now. <laughs> Like whether Mark existed or not. Yeah, I, 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 I get what Mike's coming from here, that these people might not even exist and they just made this up. But I get your point of view that maybe Mark made this whole thing up. I'm not exactly sure. And the author just kind of got pulled into a house where there was some tomfoolery going on and mm. some trickery. I mean, because it does lead back to Mark, right? Like the, the phone calls or the scratches on his chest. Okay. Well, you could do that yourself. And we know from covering these type of stories in UFO ones, I'm very guilty of this is that parent people that are like real into the paranormal 
pretty gullible sometimes. And I can. They all want to believe. Yeah. Absolutely. And sure. I've fallen for some shit. Remember um, Ed Walters? He actually got MUFON down there. That MUFON went all in on Ed yeah, Walters, right. and they were down there for a while. Meanwhile, Ed Walters has a fucking paper mache model of his UFO. Yeah. He's like, oh, that's not that's not what I use. That's <laughs> something completely different. <laughs> okay, so this is a prototype. <laughs> there are instances that we've talked about where paranormal guys get tricked by that's a good point by people hoaxing. Well, I like this because we have three different answers. I'm undetermined. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not sure. It's a fun story. I love these poltergeist yeah. ones. This is good stuff. I hope it happened. Because I actually yeah. believe in some poltergeist stories. Yeah, right. I, I want to believe this stuff. Yeah, exactly. Well, we gave our final thoughts, right? Yeah. Uh, is there anything else to uh, di- dissect in this one? You know, it's not great when I don't believe in it. Because I believe in Jeff the Talking I know. Mongoose. Our debate is just who kayfabe who in this yeah. one. Like I believe that, that a talking mongoose to exi- <laughs> mongoose <laughs> existed. True. So well, that one hundred percent. You also got real uh, snotty with Dave about asking if the bunny was real because it was yeah. a stuffed <laughs> bu- a rabbit or bunny or whatever it was. Like no motherfucker <laughs> it was stuffed, <laughs> as opposed to those real talking bunnies. It's a valid point. All right, so what what do we say at the top of the show? It's been what nine, ten days since we recorded. Something like that, yeah. Ooh boy, this is a list, and here we go. Thank you to new patrons: Foster sucks. Here's Johnny, Jessica Hamilton, Cody Davis, Cleveland sucks. You suck. Pal. Come on, stop it. Chronic cuss. Don't trip. Fill my anus. <laughs> is that you, Dave? Fill my anus. Is. That's me. <laughs> Damn it! You get me every time. I did last time. I, I think it took me seventeen guesses. <laughs> Jeff Bulanda, Emma Borelli, Peter Allen Rubel, Kill Dave, Fuck Mike, Mary Ian. That's that, not. That's nice. smart. That's what I would do. So. <laughs> wow. How are you gonna fuck me and Mary Ian while you're killing yourself, pal? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> he, took, he was ready to explain. <laughs> the physics world of this uh, don't apply. It would find a way. Uh, Jono, Milo, strange menagerie.com, Caruso. It's motherfucker trying to work on a free plug. <laughs> Ad, Adam, my nuts taste. <laughs> uh, Alicia. Roberta de, de Chico, Justin Honey, Stephen Clem, Miranda QP2, Amanda Penny, Trainwreck, Tyler Parker, Sarah Rowe, May Gusta, Callum, Emma B, fucking Darty Cunt, yay boy! <laughs> <laughs> You know, we could just read your name. <laughs> Hannah Barton, Necro Fanny, Haley Weissman, Close Your Blinds Australia. Absolutely. Don't leave them open. Can you imagine you you left your blinds open and there's just a fucking jacked kangaroo <laughs> watching, like, I'll fight you, watching you masturbate, like just looking at you? Like, what do you do? At that point, you just give up. You're not winning. Like I should have listened to Mike Nampai and uh-huh. closed my blinds. <laughs> what fuck's wrong with me? Just saying. Tove138, Jeremy Stewart, Calamity, Tasha Arth, Michael Sherman, Country Mike and the Boys, Derek Jiger, Jiger, Alex, Papa Smurf Balls Ain't Blue, <laughs> Dustin Parker. <laughs> I remember that popping up on my phone the other day and I started laughing. <laughs> Why do you you're still getting like notifications for this pal? Oh yeah. God I get, damn. I get notifications every time someone joins. Oh my gosh. Going to the store for milk, BRB. You could literally have anything red and that's what you go with. <laughs> Andrea Stump, Kelly Howell, Star Binix, Sarah Loves Dave, F them other bitches. Fucking goddamn right. I hear you. Jordan Vasquez, Amanda Rubin. <laughs> Amanda, Amanda Rubin, Rubin tug. <laughs> oh God. Chris, 
Scotty Ray Ray, Soup, Danny Frybarger, Carrie Sanders, Aubrey Brown, Mr. Muggs has a stiffy, Sierra Ortmeyer, Rogelio Rojas, Kelsey, Ariel, Tanya Willard. Bear with me, folks. We're halfway through. Senior Sailor of the Seminole Fleet. <laughs> Cold SpaghettiOs suck. Sounds like something who's never tried them. Somebody who's never tried them would say. <laughs> Brandon Bord- Bordreau. Lauren De Julios. Julius. Big Dick John. Finn Hansen. Coley Funk. James Hansen. Joshua Woodley. Mike's number one cuck. That's right, bitch. <laughs> Hot Pockets, a.k.a. The Bitch Butcher, Nice Cold Cumsicle, Cameron Dickinson, Danielle Delbridge, Sky Oliver, Nadine Steedolf, Mark R. Rogers, Shawn Michaels and his Dutch boy haircut and puke brown <laughs> tights. Not great. That's yeah, not a good look. That was his return in 2002. Joshua. Declan and Declan's penis. <laughs> we told you you don't need to sign up, motherfucker. We'll let you listen to the episodes for free. That's a fucking idiot. Who hired this intern? <laughs> Megan Rosick. Von Doom Victor 68. Cuckles the Clown. Fatima Barber Neater. Britain Coral. Aunt Maud's hubby gets cucked by Black Monk. <laughs> <laughs> of Pontefract, that guy? <laughs> Possibly. Tim Millings, JT Ryan, Taylor Davis, Beth Teat, Soon, Katie White, Aindag, Brianne, Lindy Cooper, Sherry Poppins, Jenny Coleman, Jillian Mullen, Sadake, Sadaka, Mel Butt, Fuzzy Skulls, Alina Bolson, Whistling Scrotum, Isabel Trudell, Trisha, Shaven Dahuha, <laughs> PNW Florida Transplant. Thank you all very much. We're at patreon.com slash Necronomapod. Ian with the reviews. I got a bunch of them too. Um, for iTunes, I've worn for Heck, Slim Savage, Giancarlo TV, Gooey. BZPE, Podcast Commuter, AT Hiker 1000, Noah Guys, Katie Gusta, NCJD, C Funk, Annie McCusba 96, Nikki Margaret, Gina Fitz, Adder Tits Off. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Fallis and You, Seth the Cool Dude. Icarus flew too close and Alex Nigelli. Thank you for the awesome reviews. Uh, a few weeks ago, I think we had said maybe even last week. I don't know. Time's all jumbled up for me now. Uh, if you were part of our uh, military, you let us know. And we're going to give you a special shout out. Whether you're a patron, whether or not, well, you're just someone who listens to the show. Um, so go ahead and hit us up on any of the socials or at necronomapod.com or inquiries at necronomapod.com. Uh, and Dave, I think you have some shout outs. I've got a couple of those. I have Noah Geis. I have Benjamin Key. I have Albert Purvis. And I have Maddie B. Thank you so much. And that also goes to vets too, not just actors. Of course. Mm-hmm. Without you guys, we would not have a country. We would not exist. So thank you for your service. Thank you for listening. Coming up on Patreon, a lot of that, being thankful for the military. I would hope so, yeah. yeah. Of got, course. Got an ep- Well, I'm talking about the episode we got coming up this week. Yes. It's, uh, it's an intense episode coming up this Friday. I don't yeah. even know how to describe that Patreon episode Friday. It's. Uh, I guess we'll just have to tune in or subscribe and find out. It's people that are much more... Of a man than I am because the things we're going to talk about, I could not survive. So Mm-mm. that's a fucking teaser. All right, I and got, Dave, you have international shout outs ish. I do. I have a posty Jess. I have Amber VHS uh, 95 and I have Henwood 14. 
with those awesome international shout outs. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. We are <laughs> on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube at Necronomapod, Patreon.com slash Necronomapod, Amazon.com, search Necronomapod for all the merch, and uh, Necronomapod.com. I think I covered it all. Sounds good to me. All right, you guys ready for a cool down beer? Cheers. <laughs>